Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 174, featuring Daniel Andrews and Sasha Rice. This is a good one, folks. I've called it the easy button for child care management. Uh, we are digging into a up and coming and rapidly evolving child care management software. And I want you to get to know Playground today. Playground software is... Um, a really cool solution that is taking the childcare industry by storm. Daniel and Sasha are the co-founders and I'm interviewing them today. They have been named by Forbes uh, onto the 30 under 30 list, which is an extremely prestigious list to get on. And we've got some incredible entrepreneurs that I want you to meet on this episode. Before we dive in, I want to thank my sponsor today of today's podcast episode, Grow Your Center. If you are struggling with keeping your website up to date, your team is frustrated by your CRM software and or you want to completely outsource your hiring to a team that knows how to find more A player teachers and director applicants, give Grow Your Center a call today. We've built over 300 world-class websites for early education programs. We can help you fix your recruiting and hiring. And we can also handle your social media and Google ads as well as CRM optimization. Learn more today with a free get acquainted call at growyourcenter.com. Get into boss mode today and take it off your plate at growyourcenter.com. Uh, I'm sitting here in early April recording this intro for you, and it's snowing here in the mountains of Western Colorado. So uh, we are approaching, quickly approaching the end of ski season. 2024 and i'm actually skiing tomorrow uh aspen highlands closes and they have a huge closing party so i will be wearing uh, my disco party outfit on the slopes and i hope that whatever you're doing and this week after uh easter that you're having a great week um and i hope it's not snowing on you like it is on me <laughs> not not literally of course but but you know that's what makes living in the mountains, unique and fun. And uh, the weather's always changing and heck, we need the moisture. I am about to go into something pretty special. Uh, the day that this episode releases is the day before our brand new two-day virtual challenge. We're doing a two-day spring conference, completely virtual. You can experience it from uh, the convenience of your own desk or wherever you are, your own laptop. Uh, even your phone. And it's called the Road to Freedom Challenge. And myself and Jennifer Connor are co hosting it. And we have uh, industry speaker Beth Cannon, whom many of you all know and love. And we're really excited for her to join us. And if you haven't signed up yet for the challenge, today is probably the last day if you're listening to this live, which would be April 10th or 11 ish when this goes live. So if you uh, go to childcaresuccess.com. You can see at the very top of that page a graphic image about the Road to Freedom Challenge. And just click that and pop on over and get registered because guess what? It's absolutely free. So come and join us. It's going to be an incredible two day online conference and challenge. And it's going to help you get out of your doldrums and get back on the road to success in your childcare business. So um, what do I talk about on today's podcast with Daniel and Sasha? It's important to always get new perspectives, in the, especially in the fields of uh, automation and technology and what's going on in the space inside of the ECE industry. And Daniel and Sasha have some unique perspectives. They have hundreds of clients and they're quickly growing their market share in the parent communication and all-in-one child care management software space. They call their solution the allest and oneest, and they are quickly adding new features like drop-in management and payroll modules are coming soon as well. So uh, this is a pretty cool episode uh, shifting to 
talking about what's best and brightest and up and coming in software automation and technology for your schools and your preschools. Sasha and Daniel are the co-founders and they've been friends since high school. And Daniel has come from a early learning background, uh, multi-generational. So he talks about that on the podcast. They talk about what makes this software solution different than others out there and so much more. So we really dive into entrepreneurship as well. And if you enjoy those kinds of conversations, you're going to love this episode. I'm going to go right to it, guys. Without any further ado, let's meet Daniel Andrews and Sasha Rice here at Child Care Rockstar Radio. Enjoy. I am so thrilled to welcome you back to the podcast today, everybody. I'm excited to have you meet Daniel Andrews and Sasha Rice, who are co-founders of Playground. Guys, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thrilled to have you here. Um, Where are you right now? We're in our headquarters in New York City. Awesome. Tell us a little bit more about Playground. You guys co-founded it. How, How long ago did you found it? And kind of what was your vision in creating something in this space for childcare? Yeah, great question. So we started it about half a decade ago. Really, it started off as a way to serve my family. So actually, a little bit of background about me as well. My entire family is in the early childhood education space. My mom, oh, wow. was, uh, my mom was a preschool director for over 25 years. Uh, she actually just retired back in August, and now she's a full-time professor of early childhood education. But we initially built the first version of Playground to solve some of the problems that we saw, uh, just kind of observing at our school. Um, you know, I can go a little more into that a little bit, but the rest of my family also in early childhood education. So my aunt runs a chain of schools, grandma's a preschool administrator, and my sister is occupational therapist in childcare. And so Playground was born as a way to solve some of the problems for them. Okay. Love that background. That's very, very cool. Sasha, how about you? What did you bring to the table? Yeah, so our founding story goes back to high school. I actually went to school with Daniel and with his brother, Josh. I consider their mom my my second mom. And so we kind of saw firsthand a lot of the, the struggles that child care owners and directors faced on a day-to-day basis. My background is in product design and um, helping build successful technology products. And so um, it was kind of like a, a natural blend when... Daniel and Josh came up and said, hey, we want to solve these problems for our families and for the rest of the the space. Um, And I was like, this sounds like a a really cool problem to work on. And that's kind of kind of how we we got into it. Okay, cool. So I have had several founders of companies similar to yours in terms of child care management softwares or parent communication platforms. Uh, most notably, probably the Bright Wheel story from Shark Tank was featured on this podcast. So I'm I'm here with you today to find out your unique story in terms of, you know, coming into a somewhat crowded space, just say it for what it is. Um, what were you going to bring that was going to be different, new and fresh? Or what, what are you bringing? Yeah, uh, I think our differentiated approach is kind of our new technology that we're bringing. So a lot of that comes down to like really solving the problems that we are building software for. So for example, my mom's school had floor to ceiling file cabinets. And so one of the first features we developed was a way to manage online paperwork. Um, With like 350 families, the paperwork stack was taller than I was when she would go to process enrollment applications. And any missing signatures or names or information there was going to cause a huge problem. Um, Additionally, like the other story I like to tell here is that she would uh, have students come to school with their backpacks, with a lunchbox, and then they check for thousands of dollars of preschool tuition every single day because all of the billing solutions that she found were not flexible enough to meet her needs in the way that she was billing uh, for her families. Interesting. And so there were point solutions out there or you know, similar to Brightwheel as well, where some classrooms at her school were actually using Brightwheel when we first started working with her but many were still opting for other software platforms such as like Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups where families were more familiar with that uh, software in order to get that done. The other piece that we really focus on is a lot of that revenue generation aspect of childcare. How can we grow your business faster, make it more efficient? And so we're like, for example, right now we just launched a product for drop-in care. 
uh, where families can automatically sign up for slots for drop-in care based on availability, making sure that you can fill every single last spot uh, within your school. So if somebody's not able to make cool. it that day, another family can go and take that. Right. Um, Love that. Are there any other features that you want to kind of brag about in addition to the drop-in care, like anything that you really feel is your sweet spot? Because that's super cool. And I love that you guys have that now because that's, that's, yeah. that's a huge need. Love that. Well, we were we were hoping to, to brag at the end, but happy to jump into it now. <laughs> yeah, um, let's just jump in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one, one other big one that we launched uh, about a month ago is payroll, where we have uh, end-to-end payroll integrated in our platform. You don't have to, it's, it's all embedded actually. So there's not a, a separate system that you have to log into. There's no integrations. Um, we do all of the tax calculations, withholdings, um, pay stubs, really just all in one place. Um, for a lot of folks, they're able to do a lot of their operations in some of those platforms that you previously mentioned. But once it gets to you know HR or kind of other aspects of running the business itself, you're finding yourself as a childcare business owner kind of relegated to having to piece together some other fragmented systems. And so our thesis here is that Playground should be the allest in onest, um, <laughs> actually getting everything in one place. And so a big, big, big piece of that is payroll, especially because um, on the books, that is one of the biggest expenses for these business owners. Right. Very, very cool. Um, I love that. So you know, historically, early childhood, ECE, early learning has been a little bit of a slower adopter of technology. They, a lot of the, especially, you know, older, old school owners want to just focus on classroom um, curriculum and amazing learning for children and tend to be a little bit you know, and I think that's changed. I wanted to get your perspective on it because I feel like when I first started in this industry 15 years ago, it was really a slow adoption, definitely more laggards. And now we have a lot more private equity in the space. We have a lot of people buying up schools and doing fast expansion. Um, and they're more fast adopters of technology. So have you guys noticed any differences as you've been in the space? I know it's it's been five years, but Talk a little bit about that or how you have worked with early learning owners that are a little bit not so tech savvy to help ease their pain in this area. Without a doubt. So actually one uh, kind of internal process that we like to share is we have this thing called the grandma test. It's actually uh, Dan's grandma, who we previously mentioned, she's an admin at an ECE program. Um, and she only got a phone like four or five years ago, I think it was during COVID, during the, the pandemic where she couldn't see her grandkids anymore. She wanted to be able to FaceTime them. And so like, she was, you know, as tech averse as they they come. And so <laughs> part of our process was before we roll out any features on a playground, we make sure that she can actually navigate it. And, and if she passes, then it goes out to launch. Otherwise we kind of take it back to to test. Um, but I think that we, we launched right around COVID. And so there was this sort of like mass adoption to technology, especially when you're kind of dealing with attendance where for so long it was paper and pencil and you needed to have um, people, you know, actually accounting for when kids are coming in and out. And so just like that, this was sort of like flipped on its head and you needed a digital contactless solution. And so there was a sort of like mass adoption of technology. I think it's only accelerated since then. Um, but also what you're seeing, as you mentioned, with this entrance of private equity and, and people trying to grow multi-site businesses, um, a lot of the existing owners and directors are seeing, hey, if we want to be able to compete, if we want to be able to operate at the same level, we need to adopt the same tools that they're using. Yeah. Love One thing that. to add there, uh, we actually see the states themselves as part of their administration of early child education programs, adopting technology as well. Uh, for many of the providers that we work with, the default way they submit subsidy information or attendance information to get subsidies back is by taking all of their uh, paper and pencil attendance, three hole punching it, putting it into a binder and then shipping it out to the states. And so we're actually now and we have uh, contracts and partnerships with the state of Iowa, Kansas and Indiana, where we're automating a lot of that attendance management. So that way we can automatically send that information out to the state for subsidy reimbursement. Um, and so we actually see the states accelerating this process a lot where 
tens of hours a month in terms of admin process are now compressed down into almost immediate by just pressing a button to submit attendance. Wow, that's super cool. I love that. Let's get the, all the other states on board. Jeez, that's amazing. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you are. That's very cool. Let's talk about uh, scaling. In terms of business scaling, like you guys are going through your own founder's journey as being CEOs and founders to scale Playground. And it, then, of course, we've got alongside us and you know us, ourselves as well, alongside us are clients who are expanding into new locations and trying to scale their teams and working on building out their leadership teams. So what have you learned? What either tips or tricks or what have you learned as founders that can help the listeners scale their companies? Not just maybe technology, but anything on the human side of the business in terms of leadership or anything else around scaling that you want to share? Yeah, we we found that all of that comes down to just working with great people. Um, and one of the, I mean, not to put this back on the preschool side, but one of the things that we find that is really important to us is being able to pay them a proper wage, like being able to pay for that top talent, get access to that top talent. And a lot of that really does come down to being able to afford that as well. Um, and so one thing that, for example, my mom does that, like she's my inspiration uh, in terms of how she thinks about compensation. She wants to charge her parents more money so that way she can pay her staff more. Uh, it's finding all of these different ways that we can kind of make additional revenue that is exciting for our employees to work on. And that way, when we generate that revenue, we can put that back into their paychecks in the form of bonuses, commissions, or you know, seeking out that top talent. Um, a lot of the big problems that we've faced have become significantly smaller by putting phenomenal people in front of those problems, where if you find someone great, you can just trust that they'll get the job done and that you don't need to be managing the day-to-day. -day. And so right. that delegation has been by far the biggest unlock for us. Mm -hmm. And kind of core to the, our ability to scale at such yeah. a pace with such a small team. Cool. And then in terms of technology that you use in-house to manage your your business, are you using, I'm assuming you're probably using Slack. What other, Slack. and do you guys have like a remote workforce or is everybody there in New York City? We are hybrid. So at the moment we have some people in New York and we have some people who are across the country. But internally, yes, we're using Slack. I actually worked there for a summer. Uh, okay. All the products. But a lot of those tools have made it significantly easier for us to both report and then also communicate. Um, so making sure that, you know, we set up a goal and there's a task to be done. How can we actually track those metrics and get that done? And so we internally actually use uh, Salesforce in order to manage like our sales team and marketing efforts. Um, but we actually spend a lot of time building internal products as well, uh, kind of dog fooding our own playground mm -hmm. products to track all of this. So for example, for our activation, uh, we have dashboards that track all of the activation for our schools and for their life cycle through their um, progress in playground. And so we also offer those same dashboards and infrastructure to our schools so that way they can track their own school's progress and seeing what's happening internally as well. And cool. so, yeah, that's part of our thought process there is that we should build tools that we can then share with the providers that we work with. For project management, are you guys using Asana or are you using anything of that nature that's out of the box or do you build your own thing? Yeah, so we... We have two tools that we really love. We use Notion for a lot of customer facing tools and more for like our internal knowledge base for yeah. just any sort of like dumping of information. Yeah. Um, but then on a uh, product side, we have this really phenomenal tool called Linear and they have some of the probably one of the best products on the market right now in terms of both design and engineering quality of, of product. It's really fantastic. Okay. I don't know about that one. I'll have to check that out. Linear. Yeah, it's one of the most beautiful landing pages you'll ever see in your life. Okay. We look to them for inspiration. Very. <laughs> All right. I like that. I, as a best practice that I always share with my listeners and with our clients is always like, look outside of the industry at what is cool, new, different that you can model um, or tap into or use or, you know, but definitely Notion. Um, we are starting to use it in the CCSC side for our internal communication ops onboarding for all of our teammates, but the, uh, at Grow Your Center was another company that I co-founded. We use Notion as well. And that's been very, very, uh, very helpful and useful. So those folks that are listening that if you guys aren't using technologies yet, you can kind of jot those down. And, you know, I just always like to give resources on this podcast. So let's talk about mindset a little bit, because being a fellow company founder, I know that you can have dark days and you can have sleepless nights. And so what are some things that you do 
when you're having a tough week or you're having a, you know, a tough mindset situation or really facing a big challenge in your business, well, what are some things that you guys do? And you can share separately if you want to. Yeah. You want to go first? Yeah, I'll start. Um, one, one of the really cool things about one working with family and then also building for family is that it really grounds you on what the work you're doing is like who it's impacting and why it's actually getting done. And so having like long phone calls with the family, like my family in preschool or not is like awesome. Uh, it really does help kind of ground and, you know, stabilize you and put everything uh, like relative to where it all is. Uh, the other big one in order to like really clear my mind is working out. Uh, like strength training at least four times a week for me has been game changing. Nice. Yeah, I think okay. it's just important to have those kinds of outlets, um, whether it's like Dan said, like the, the exercise one, you know, even so much as going outside for 15 minutes and, and taking a walk and just like breathing in the air. And I think it comes back to grounding yourself on what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it, like zooming out and recognizing sort of progress here. I think the other piece that is um, incredibly important is the fact that I I do trust Dan and Josh, our our third co-founder, like we are able to just be brutally honest with each other. Um, and it's ultimately us, the three of us against the problem. It's not us against each other. And so realigning and recognizing like what it is that we're working for is why we're doing it um, ultimately helps us get into the right direction. Cool. Love that. In terms of people that have had an impact on your life, uh, your young lives, Talk a little bit about who inspires you, who maybe who you follow, you know, it could be somebody like a Steve Jobs type or anybody, you know, that you go, you guys want to share have been heroes to you. Who are your heroes? I'll start this one. Uh, I think first for me is my inspiration is definitely my mom. Uh, she's both gone like so far and successful in business has also, you know, gotten her doctorate in education. Uh, she really instilled like a really deep sense of curiosity, for lack of better phrasing, like we would spend a lot of time reading in our childhood and just trying to learn as much as possible. And so I owe a lot of that to her. Um, on like more of a kind of business side of things and life people I look to as people I aspire to be, uh, the founder of Linear actually is very inspirational and just like his entire philosophy of mind and how he goes about building products and how he thinks about customers and their interactions and what like excellence really can look for, look like. And he just repeatedly sets the bar in terms of what it looks like to build a company, what it looks like to build a phenomenal product and get users to be absolutely in love with your output. Nice. And what's his name? Uh, his first name is Carrie, but. Okay. Carrie it? He has yeah. a, he's great on Twitter also, if you're active there. Okay, cool. Even though it's not called Twitter anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Everybody still calls it Twitter. Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, you, really? send out, you send out a tweet. You don't send out an X, right? That's Maybe right. You. I mean, come on. Yeah. And how about you? Uh, well, I, I do love and am inspired by my mom for very similar reasons. Um, I think on the, the business side, um, a founder that I aspire to be like is Parker Conrad, the CEO and founder of Rippling. He's actually the one who coined the term allest and oneest that I used earlier. That was um, good. Yeah. All, all credit to him. He's, I mean, his philosophy with regards to growing and scaling a team is is really um, inspirational, phenomenal. I mean, his his whole story is insane. He started a company, got kicked out of it, started a com direct competitor, and is now significantly larger than it. Um, and just his entire philosophy with how to approach building and scaling a product and a team has been um, incredibly impactful for us here at Playground as well. So I'm assuming that you guys have, as the basis of your culture, some really solid core values that you developed and that you communicate when you hire and then when you offboard employees and you live and breathe by them because I'm, I'm getting a vibe that you guys are kind of leadership junkies and you, you have that. So talk to me about your values. Like what are one or two values that you hold dear that are in your company and in your life that you, you know, kind of are driven by? Yeah, uh, I think the number one for us is definitely ownership. Um, without a doubt, I think that is the number one characteristic that makes someone successful at our company. And I think that is able to provide a lot of value to our customers and ultimately to us as a team. Um, that can mean a lot of things, but like the thing I like to reference back to is we actually painted our whole office. Uh, the people who walked in saw that there were gray walls and white paint and just picked up a paintbrush and started painting. Like those are the people I want. Not somebody's like, what should I do or where should I paint? 
Like right. those people who can take initiative and really understand that like, hey, there's a job to be done. I have all the tools I need. Let's get it done. Or right. those who are like, you know, take it a step further and are like, hey, there's high to reach places. We need rollers. I'm actually going to run to the store and go pick up like a ladder in order to get those high to reach places. Um, you know, those are the people that you can trust with your life. <laughs> those are the people that you can put in front of any task and you know that'll get done because yeah. they just like, you know, that initiative, that agency, that ability to just see problems and know that they can be solved without anyone pointing and telling you is probably the number one indicator and most powerful thing uh, when hiring someone, at least for a technology company like ours. Right. The other piece that's incredibly important is craft for us and paying attention to those details and sweating what those details actually look like going the extra mile. Um, there's kind of goes back to like one of our big differentiators. Obviously, there's a lot of options in the child care management space. There's a lot of boxes that are checked. But when you actually dig in, how do these options actually meet your needs? Are they solving your problem at the very, very core of what you need solved? Um, and so paying attention to craft and really caring about what you're building um, is what ultimately will help hopefully get us that, that differentiation and in, in what we look for when we hire people on our team. Mm -hmm. So speaking of hiring, thanks for sharing that. Is there anything that you guys do in your hiring process that you think is kind of cool, innovative, or different? Because we're always looking for new, I hate the word hacks, but we're always looking for new tips and tricks in, and I know you mentioned earlier about making sure that you're paying, you know, a really solid wage for your market so you can attract the best talent, which 100% I agree with. Is there anything else that you do maybe in your process or in your vetting or um, little, you know, hoops they have to jump through or people, the things that you look for in people to really make good hires. Yeah. At the end of the day, we kind of just like want to see what you're like to work with. And I know Dan has more thoughts on this. Uh, yeah. So I think we have a very short, but effective interview process. We mm -hmm. do a uh, phone call screen. This is for all roles at the moment. Uh, we do a phone call screen, make sure that we're mutually on the same page in terms of understanding culturally what it looks like to work at a startup what it's like to work in child care do you like meet those ownership and craft criteria um then we just check do you have those baseline technical skills or requirements in order to get the job done uh and then i think this is the most unique part we actually bring people on site and have them do a day or two's worth of work and we actually see what it's like to work with them as individuals uh we pay them for that we don't ask that they take the time off to do uh like work for us without that but we'll give them like for engineering, we'll give them actual tickets for sales. We'll actually have them make phone calls for marketing. We'll have them design landing pages for us uh, or whatever else it might be that they're doing in our marketing capacity. And like, we actually want to see them do work for Playground and see one, do they actually like working with us? Like the way that we built our company is obviously unique. Everyone has like their unique um, culture and, you know, is that something they enjoy? But then also, do we like working with them? Is the output of their work up to our bar? Uh, is this somebody that we want to be building like a generational company with? And so something we found is that you can tell really quickly uh, once you actually bring them in, put the job in front of them, kind of that ownership and craft piece that we mentioned before are very easy to figure out. Um, and so we, we found that to be a very effective hiring tool for us. And so they enjoy it because they get paid, uh, especially if they're on the job hunt, they might be out of work for a little bit or, and then the other side of it is we get to see the actual output. Right, love that. Um... So the audience can use that. We talk a lot about classroom auditions and whether or not they can actually go into the classroom, depending on the state. But certainly you can create a mock classroom audition. There's all different kinds of things that you guys can be doing inside of your centers to really see if you want to work with this person and using an objective scoring because there's subjective and then there's objective. But getting people to, you know, give input and feedback that are going to be actually working with this individual too, like it can help with buy in to get other directors, leaders, and teachers to also be part of the audition and just get a vibe for this person. And then they can also kind of like score this person. So it also gets them bought in on the person that gets hired for the, you know, so that I think it helps with also forming teams inside of classrooms as well. Cause sometimes that can be tricky. Two, two things that my mom actually goes around the yeah. country's conferences about relating to that. One is, would you let your own kids be in that person's classroom? For teachers, like, would you feel comfortable knowing that they're in their care for, you know, six, eight hours a day and that they're going to be properly cared for? Um, and I think that's a really big piece on that side. Yeah. Uh, and so you can see that in person, right? Like you can see how they interact with kids um, mm -hmm. and children in that capacity. Um, and then the, 
the other side of that also is that she's upset when people have preferences. So if you have like multiple three-year-old classrooms, like if people are preferring certain teachers, that might mean that, uh, you know, one teacher's doing something better or maybe one other teacher's not up to par. And it's not necessarily that that's a bad thing. It just might mean that you need additional training or support to get them. So that way there's no real preferences between the classrooms. Um, yes, completely so I agree. I just thought that was like an interesting insight and in kind of how we kind of adopted that strategy for our own hiring needs. Right. Love that. Very cool. Where are you guys headed for 2024? Now, I know that we are doing a webinar together on emerging technologies, revolutionizing the childcare industry um, as a co-branded webinar between our companies here. We don't have a date for that yet, but in the intro and in the show notes, I'll, I'll promote it with a link as we get closer. But um, other than that, what are you working on in your company for 2024 and beyond? What, what are some things that are like top of mind for you right now? Yeah, so 2023 was a, an absolutely explosive year for us, and 2024 is gearing up to be um, just as crazy, if not crazier. Um, so outside of hiring across all roles, we're honestly most excited about what's happening on the product and what our customers and future customers will be getting. So like I said before, um, that payroll launch was huge. We're seeing incredible success so far with how much time people are able to save. Oftentimes, there's also a lot of cost savings when you switch over to our payroll piece. Um, but the the other one that's really, really exciting is the putting the drop in on autopilot. So oftentimes, it's really, really hard to fill that last 10% of your capacity if you're not at you know a full wait list. And so this new drop in launch, which is coming out um, actually next week, will basically oh. enable folks to just run at 100% or higher uh, enrollment capacity uh, without touching anything. It's just a, a really slick feature with minimal, minimal maintenance and just helps these folks that already are staffing their centers um, get those extra slots filled. Awesome. One, one other thing that uh, yeah. has been very hyped up, but honestly does have many practical uses is the whole artificial intelligence, like the chat GPTs. So we've already put in an administrative assistant that you can talk to, build out lesson plans, communication. Uh, but we want to go much deeper in terms of embedding all those AI functionalities, like how can we help your staff? And so um, some things that I'm excited that are coming out in the near future are like automated responses that are like professionalized uh, when messaging to families. So like if there's slice outbreaks or sicknesses and you need help crafting a message that comes off as professional, urgent, but maybe not scary, uh, like all of those kind of prompts in order to help manage that communication and professionalize that whole service piece. Um, we've already started embedding AI throughout like our newsletter functionality where you can have AI uh, images to make you know your newsletters more colorful and bright. But I think there's a lot of ways that we could subtly in insert artificial intelligence in these chatbots in order to improve these interactions with families and especially along the side of communication and those engagement pieces with like lesson plans as well. Love that. That's all really, really exciting stuff, guys. And by the time that this if you're watching this um, when it's airing, like on the air date of this podcast, your uh, the uh, drop in will already have launched. Hopefully, fingers crossed, right? Um, because yeah, because it's a couple, it's several weeks out in terms of recording versus launching. So that's cool. So if you're listening to this, guys um, in the audience, if you want to contact um, the folks over at Playground and learn more about it. And I'm assuming that you guys have some sort of a complimentary demo offer or what are some ways that people can learn more and, and test drive the software? Absolutely. Uh, you can either visit us online at tryplayground.com or you can give our company a ring directly at 310-625-3726. All right. Very cool. Tryplayground.com. Any other things that you want to share? Like if you, you know, this is your chance to, I guess, give a word of wisdom or anything that you want to share to the childcare industry that listens to this podcast or, and or watches it. Um, so what, what do you want to share? Anything? Yeah. Well, not some, I, I think we're, we're, we're good with the, we feel good with the amount of plugging that we've done for like, <laughs> More so, just want to express our gratitude for everyone in the space. Obviously, Chris, you and your team have been phenomenal, but also, and I think most importantly, 
the actual child care providers and teachers that might be listening in. Uh, thank you for all the, the hard work that you do. It, it really is so impressive how you, you know, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, obviously, we're a, a small, small part of that. And so anything that we can do to hopefully make your days easier, make your, your families and your teachers' days easier, we'd be happy to do so. And so if you want to see what the future of managing childcare businesses look like, give us a shout. I promise you won't be disappointed. But um, overall, just really appreciate being here. Love it. Daniel, any final words? I think Sasha sums it up well. Uh, I feel like the real <laughs> work is being done in the child care centers and uh, yeah. for all these providers. And so we just feel very fortunate that we get to play our small part in helping make this excellent child care uh, accessible to as many students as possible. Yep. I love it too. I feel the same way. Um, I'm very grateful to have made an impact in just helping helping people ease their pain, you know, and helping them ease the challenges in their business. And you guys are doing great uh, in that area. So thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. And I love that you came from that ECE background and that you guys have been friends for so long. And it's a very, very cool story. It's a very loving story. So I love that. Um, thanks for being on the podcast today. I really appreciate it, you guys. And uh, thanks to everybody for listening in once again. We will talk to you all next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Chris. You. Take care and God bless. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please leave a review and share it with someone you know to help spread the word to friends in our industry and on social media. Child Care Business Success is my passion, and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, I've got a new video training that shows you how to add six figures or more of new revenue to your program in the next 60 days by improving your hiring and your enrollment systems. To watch my new video, just go to www.fixmyschool.com. That's fixmyschool.com. Thanks. Take care and God bless.